What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. These two signs are evidence of poor design. What are they? That's what we'll be talking about today in the gardening show. Let's go. Today, I want to start the show off with a quote from Bill Mollison. I'm going to paraphrase it just a little bit. It goes, in permaculture, nobody really knows what they're doing. You don't know what you're doing, maybe. I don't know what I'm doing. But as long as it ends up OK, you won't have to do anything. So I hope that kind of gets you thinking a little bit as we get into the episode. Before we get into the two sides of poor design, we have to first talk a little bit about design. Design is the key word in permaculture. And whenever you're creating a garden or any system, design should be one of your main focuses. And design is simply just arranging components in a pattern. But permaculture design is a little different. In permaculture design, we're arranging these components in a pattern to serve a function. This function is to support all life, including ourselves. We aren't just trying to design a pattern that looks nice. We're trying to design a system of living components all working together in harmony. In permaculture though, we want to go a step further than that into functional design. Functional design is still arranging components into a pattern for a function, which is to support life. But we want these components to support multiple functions. And what I mean by that is, say you have a greenhouse and you have, you're going to take this greenhouse and you could attach it to the side of your house. So the greenhouse, that's the component. And the function of that is to heat your house. So that's one function that that component of a greenhouse is supporting. Another function of that would be you can grow food in that. So now you have, like I said, that component of a greenhouse which is supporting multiple functions. For a system to be stable, we also want multiple components to support one function. For instance, the function of heating our house, we want multiple components to do that. Like the greenhouse, that supports heating the house. And we can also have a wood stove. That would be two components supporting the one function of heating the house. That's how you really get stability. There is stability and diversity, but true, true stability comes from having more connections and strong, harmonious connections. Let's take a step back though for a minute and get into the garden tip of the week. This week's garden tip ties into the last gardening show. With planting coming around, I know you guys are starting some of your seeds. I'm starting some as you saw last video, and some of you guys may even be planting in the ground now. One thing you have to make sure you do, make sure you record when you're planting, what you're planting, get your journal out guys. Make sure you've got your garden journal going. That will really help you next year and in the years to come. I look back at my garden journal from 2017, 2016, 2015. I got to look back and see, you know, get a good feel of what happened to guide me this year. You guys gotta do the same. Now that we understand functional design and we've gotten that out of the way, we can talk about the two signs of poor design. Some of you guys might have guessed it, but these two signs are actually related. They are work and pollution. The reason these two are tied together is because pollution actually comes from work. And what is work? Work is basically when you have a component within a system that isn't supported by other components within the system. When you don't have something supported, you have to do the work. An example of that that Bill Mollison uses is if you've got a chicken coop and you don't have a water tank or a hose attached to that chicken coop, you're the one who's going to have to carry that water out. You're going to have to do the work because there's not a component within your system that's supporting the function of giving the water to the chickens. Pollution is an unused resource. Going back to the chicken example, if the chicken lays an egg and we don't harvest, we don't get that egg, that resource now becomes pollution. So the idea when creating a system is to have a system that finishes work and finishes pollution. To start that system, you're gonna need work. Every system needs it to get started. But the idea is to create a sustainable system that in time doesn't need work. And what is a sustainable system? A sustainable system is any system that over its lifetime actually produces more than it takes to maintain and start that system. So we gotta get that definition if we wanna create a sustainable system. You guys might be wondering, James, is your garden a complete functional design? Is your property a sustainable system? No, it's actually not. And that's okay. I'm working towards that. I'm learning just like you guys are too. And I'm, like I said, I'm working towards it, but I kind of choose to do some work and to make some changes for personal preference. For instance, I plant a lot of annuals like tomatoes, peppers, because I just love those. I like growing them. I, like, I enjoy doing it. 
I love the way they taste, and it requires a good amount of work for me. But those aren't my foundation. You guys know I have the food forest, which is all perennials. I've got my foundation of the perennials that I know will support me in the future. So I like having fun with some other stuff. Gardening should be fun and this should be enjoyable. I am not relying on this for, to support like all my food, but this is bringing me every day closer to food freedom to give me more options of choosing the highest quality food in the world. Because I've said it before, no one gets the option of eating the kind of food that I do. You can't pay for it. This is beyond organic. This is as close and natural as you can get. And believe me, you can taste it. And now, let's get into the video of the week. Before we get into it though, I want to let you guys know, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Steemit, I'm on Instagram. I wanted to share one of my Facebook posts because it ties into the video of the week, which is a relatively short video. But I want to share it with you guys because again, I think it has a lot of value and it's a fun video. So I'm going to read the post I wrote. I know that I'm a good gardener because I know that I truly don't know anything about gardening. Therefore, I'm always willing and open to learn. Always the teacher and never the student is a dangerous place to be. So in the beginning of that might sound a little confusing, but I'm going to go to my favorite part of the video of the week to show you guys kind of where the inspiration for some of that came from. Let's go. So Jeff's a better teacher than you are, Bill. Now I'm trying oh, to keep up with him. Nat naturally, <laughs> I think. Ask Jeff. He'll tell you he is. Jeff, are you a better teacher than Bill? No, and I never will be. <laughs> because, he, because the longer you've been doing it, the more you have to teach. And the longer that you've been doing it, the longer you've been thinking about permaculture, and the more you realise you don't know about it. And no one's been thinking about it longer than Bill. And that's quite obvious when you, you listen to the lessons that Bill has to share. So Bill, Follow that through, I'm the person who knows least about it. So Bill, how much don't you know? Nearly all of it. More than anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, there's a, uh, a long way to go always, and, and new doors open and, and your vision changes, you know. Yeah. Like, nature presents accidental things to you, and you look at it and think, oh my God, why didn't I, you know, plan that? It was great. I did, I did it the other day, you know, to me. I know that was only a short clip for the video of the week, but you guys got to watch the rest of the interview and some of other Bill's interviews. In my opinion, they're, they're so valuable. When you're driving in a car or something, don't turn on the radio. Put on one of Bill's uh, interviews or something or one of his teachings, listen to it because again, there's so much value in there. You guys know what time it is now. For those that are following, you know it's my favorite time of the week. It's time for the garden memes of the week. Let's get into them. I'm super excited. I hope you guys sent a lot. Again, here, this is going to be the link to send it to thegardeningshowjp at gmail.com. Let's get into them. For those of you that are new, you could send your memes in. I'll open them live on the show. That's what I'm doing, I've never seen these before, so I think that makes it fun. Let's get the first one open from Liz. I'll give you a shout out, this one is from Liz. Trying to enjoy the snow, but really was just wishing I could get my wood chips delivered already. Oh man. I feel you though, Liz, because it's snowing here. We're having a northeastern in Jersey, and I wanna get out there so bad. I'm itching to do garden and relating stuff. That's why I had to make this video. I had to do the gardening show, I had to do something. I already planted a, a bunch of seeds. And that's good though that you have the desire right now that springs on its way. Sometimes we have the inspiration, the motivation, and the desire to like start gardening in the wrong season. So I'm going to talk about that in a video one day, but we, gotta, we have to try to learn to kind of like uh, adjust our clocks to have that inspiration, that motivation at the right time in spring, in summer, and in harvest. Thanks for sending that in Liz and being a part of the gardening show. I appreciate it and I hope your snow melts soon and those wood chips come and you get to get out there and get your hands dirty and get gardening. Next up we've got Grant though. Grant always crushes it and he said I gotta stop sending them. No, don't, don't stop sending them. They're awesome Grant. You help make the show. I really love your memes so much and like I've said it, yeah, I really enjoy doing these memes so let's get this open. We've got a Star Wars one. Why is Yoda so good at gardening? He has a green thumb. <laughs> That's a good one. That's pretty hilarious. I like it. I, I can see you would be good at gardening for many reasons. Green thumb definitely makes sense, but I mean, I've seen him do some 
incredible stuff. Yoda's the master teacher too. I love to hear Yoda's gardening wisdom. I'd love to hear Yoda and Masanobu Fukuoka kind of talk one with another, hear what they have to say. That'd be a, fun, that'd be a funny conversation. And Bill Mollison in there. In the interview, if you guys saw all of it, Bill Mollison, like, he, he's, got, he's gotten funnier in his older age, so I think it's enjoyable. You can see him when he's younger and he's more serious during his teaching, but I think he always had a little humor, and I, I think it's good to blend the humor with the, uh, with the education. Another one from Grant, we've got Morpheus. I used to be scared of guarding, but then I decided to grow a pair. <laughs> yes, that one gets the meme of the week. If you guys have uh, never seen the garden rap that I did, that Jake Paul parody, as you guys know, it was a joke. It was all a parody, but I did it for fun to entertain you guys. But I also tried to blend some lyrics in there that had a little bit of truth to them. This way it could hopefully reach a younger audience. I don't know if it did exactly, but it was a lot of fun to do. And that was my ending, li my ending line. Uh, start a garden, grow a pear. So he memed off of that. You must have made that one, Grant, and I love it. Maybe, maybe one of my favorite memes that I've seen. Thanks for sending that in, Grant, and being part of the show. I hope you send some more next week. I'll be waiting for him. Next up, we've got David. Let's open it up. We've got a big pile of wood chips. Nice pile of wood chips. And then below it, it says, that is one big pile of wood chips. Uh, that's great. You must have made this one, too. I love it when you guys make them. And it looks like Jeff Goldblum, maybe. <laughs> oh, is this from Jurassic Park? Ah, uh, I'm just starting to get it now. Instead of a pile of wood chips. <laughs> The more I see it, the more I, I like it. It took me a minute, but I, I dig it, David. Thank you. That's today's episode, Growers. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe, hit the like button, share with your friends. We'll continue making videos like these. But there's something I wanted to share with you before I leave. Kind of like a quote. You've probably heard this quote before, and it goes that all knowledge is power, but that's not the quote I'm talking about. Because I've heard it said that all knowledge is power isn't true. Rather, applied knowledge, that's power. Just knowledge by itself is powerless. You have to apply that knowledge for it to be real power. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one, growers. JP is out.